Welcome to another broadcast of Habits and Money. Today we have a very dynamic personality in studio and her name is Cassie Case. In the event that you don't know who is Cassie Case, she's a multi-talented personality. She has over 20 years experience in the fashion design industry. She is now elevated into interior design. But along with that, she has so many other talents behind her. She's now involved in branding and marketing, and she's involved in AI and how you can use AI to systemize your processes. So without further delay, I want you to join me in welcoming Cassie Keys to Habits and Money. Hi, Cassie. How are you? I am doing fabulous. Thank you. And thank you so much for the lovely introduction. It's a pleasure to be here. <laughs> You're most welcome. You're well deserving of that. I want to say on record, happy related Mother's Day. Oh, Yesterday was Mother's Day, and um, I trust that you had an extremely enjoyable Mother's Day. I did. I did. I did. Thank you. Thank you. It was really good. It was needed. Yeah. You know, we're always going. So I'm grateful for the rest. All right. So, Cassie, you are out of Florida. Yes. Yes. I'm excited to share with the audience um, some of what you do. Can we talk about Cassie as the fashion designer? You spent over 20 years in this industry. Uh, what Help us to understand Cassie, the fashion designer. Ah, all right. So the fashion design started from the, the okay, so the, the, it's really an interesting start. My parents, when I left um, home, wanted me to go into business school, right? Um, and I wanted to explore the world of fashion, you know, so I made an agreement with them that in order to go to fashion school, I would get a certain, you know, level of grades and stuff like that. So, so they agreed. I got into fashion um, and I was in that field for about maybe 10, maybe 10 years at the point when someone walked into a store one of the stores I had designed and asked who did the design of the location I said me you know we started speaking he said he had a club on South Beach and asked me if I'd be willing to go in and design it for him so that's how the fashion evolved into into the interior design you know I was still doing fashion and doing interiors at the same time right okay um Cassie I see you're so talented you you know you're into fashion you're into interior design you're into marketing you're a mother at the same time <laughs> oh my yes uh, you you I really admire you but let's talk a little bit about interior um design um while I know someone would have approached you and talked to you about you know, transporting your excellence in design over to, to their operation. Tell us what that transition was like for you. Ah, okay. So the transition was relatively easy because I was transitioning into a space that I was familiar with. Um, growing up, my dad had always done, had always done construction, right? So, you know, for us to get money as a kid, he wouldn't, he wasn't one of those traditional dads, right? we had to actually work for it. So I would have to paint fences. I would have to do the actual physical thing to get money. It wasn't like, well, here's an essay unfamiliar. Obviously, it's a different different um, country, but unfamiliar in terms of, you know, you, you know, paint colors, you know how it's supposed to look, you know, the terminology of fashion in terms of design. So design kind of is easy to 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 go from being whether it's graphic designer fashion designer because you know color theory right so the transition wasn't hard at all um and of course it went by word of mouth a lot of it was word of mouth you know it wasn't until 2018 or 20 it was 2018 like the end of 2018 that i was approached to to you know take on a partner then um and that is after being in the realm of interiors for years. So I was approached to take on a partner and that partnership ended in 2020 and it didn't end well, you know? So um, that's pretty much how it ended. 2020 was one of those years for I want to say everybody. But I then realized after that partnership 
had I had the right systems in place, the right know-how, you know, because being an artist or being a creative is different than having the business knowledge or knowing how things are supposed to run. And when I took on the partner, I took on the partner because that was what was pitched to me, right? That because you're the creative, then this portion of the business would be handled by someone else. And if I had the know-how, right, I would have been able to see, know, and, and just know different things. When the business closed, I thought it would be best to take on a mentor, right? I needed to find someone that knew everything about what I should have known or what I should know. So I got into systems and they taught me a lot about systems. And then with the introduction of AI, I was like, okay, you know, what better way to be able to implement systems into the business? So hence the the evolution. Um, I like that. So I see that you moved from fashion into interior design. Then you went on to look at AI and um, how digital platforms can really mm. help in systemization. Can you talk to us a little bit more about AI and, um, and how it really help you to, to build systems? And then I want us to go into your operation, which is linked by design which is a branded and marketing operation but let's talk a bit about the about ai and um, systems all right so um with with ai you have the ability to be in multiple places at one time right and with the current market that we're in now where people want expedited communication expedited service it's hard for a entrepreneur while building a business to be in multiple places at one time. With, with AI, you have the ability now to clone yourself, right? You can operate, you know, and do several different things in your business and you don't have to take on additional staff to do it, right? A lot of small businesses fail, a lot of businesses fail overall because as your company grows, you have to take on more staff to do the things that you can't do or get to, you know, and a lot of the time, if they're not doing what they're supposed to do or if you know people are human you know uh, someone gets sick or they don't show up right you can't then take the role of what they're doing because you're doing something else because now your business is scaling right so when you implement ai you can have it be the assistant the receptionist the you know it can it can take on all those different roles in a business right so with what we're doing now, the systems that I was taught was more on operations. Like, you know, you go into a business, you anal analyze the needs, the necessity of the business. Like, where is the business falling short? Is it falling short in fulfillment? Is it falling short in customer service? Like, where are the business needs? Once you identify the business needs, what systems can you put in place? Um, how can you make it easier for the owner of the company to be able to do what they're good at? Um, and that's a lot of what we do. You know, we implement a lot of those systems. So even in terms of the marketing and branding, you know, if you're going out every day and you are, are, are doing what you're doing in your business, you can't then create the content for the business. You can't do the marketing for the business. You, it's, it's hard for a entrepreneur just starting out, you know, to be able to fulfill all of that. So we automate some of those things. Yeah. So in terms of the AI, what are some significant advantage in using AI? I, you made a, an important point there. I just wanted to expand on it. You say, as a rising star in business, as you scale, you may have to look at uh, adding additional human resources to help in that scaling process. But what AI does, it helps you to reduce the need for human resources right. in that scaling process. Can you talk to us about that? Because what I'm seeing here is that once one learns how to apply AI, artificial intelligence into the business ecosystem, perhaps it can set the stage to reduce uh, labor capital, uh, which should free up some more money in for, for that business. Mm -hmm. um, but to what extent do you see AI 
being integrated into the business process and uh, minimizing the cost. Because I do believe in some areas, yes, we can adopt AI, but I do believe in some other areas there is a need um, for both AI and the HR um, to oh, integrate. Share absolutely. with me your thoughts on that. Absolutely. And it all depends on the size of the business, right? So if you're a smaller business, right, and you're, you're scaling, so your product is a good product and you're scaling your product, you can implement AI in terms of chatbots. You can have it on your web website so it can communicate with people that are inquiring about your business, right? People go onto your website, instead of you responding to them, which would take time or having someone to respond to them, now you could implement like an AI chatbot. If you were, let's say, for example, you know, someone calls your office, we can now use AI to respond and act as your receptionist by providing the AI a script. So it can take calls, it can take messages, it can direct it to the right person that it needs to go to. It can then go a tier up. Whatever systems that you have in your business, let's say, for example, you have a customer reach out to you and they have a specific need or a specific problem that they're facing with something, or you're one of your deliverables. Now you can have have it respond to them real time in the same time and be able to provide the right answers to that because now you're not dependent on someone giving the wrong information. It would provide accurate real-time information on the specific need that your client may have. Along the journey, yes, you know, it, AI comes in and it plays an integral role. And I know further down the line, yes, you are going to need human, right? And that's where the business owner comes in because as a business owner, you have special expertise, right? You go into the business because there's something that you're either passionate about or be your passionate and good about, like you're good at doing. If we can put the, the business owner back in that seat where they can then use whatever specialty they have, whether it's, you know, sales or whether it's the art of the business. Um, once we can remove them from every aspect of the business and have them doing exactly what they're good at, more businesses will thrive. Because essentially, most people go into entrepreneurship, as you know, and they don't realize everything that is encompassing. And there are so many different levels of entrepreneurship. You, you can be an entrepreneur where you're working underneath someone, but you don't have the responsibility of entrepreneurship or the liability. So you don't really know what it entails. I want to be able to empower them now to now say, hey, listen, you can get back into doing what you are passionate and what you are good at doing, but still have automation that's going to automate the process efficiently, consistently. And that is the key thing. It, with AI, okay. with AI, it's consistent. All right. So what we're seeing, in other words, you, you use the term chatbot. What I know, chatbot is a very effective tool to integrate into things like your website and, you know, other digital communication platform. And uh, But talk to us a little bit about that, because um, these AI, they respond based on the information you feed it. Correct. I want to believe that for this, the chatbot to work effectively, you are putting in frequently asked questions. So and yes. um, it's a, talk to us a little bit about that. Yes. So it's really exciting, right? So you are not only able to, and of course, it depends on who you, who you get it from, right? But you can not only feed it information about your business, right? But you can also set parameters. So it goes beyond where people think that it can go. You can give it all the information on your business, right? But if you have a specific niche, it can also it can also search the web for the information and provide real-time accurate answers. You have to set obviously limits on what you want it to say because you don't want it to go beyond what you can deliver. But here's the thing. People Think, I think they have a, a, a misconceived perception of what AI can actually do now in this day and age and how much it can help a business um, because it has grown beyond where most people even have the conversations. There are few people in the space that are doing it and doing it well. Great. You, you're right. I do believe that there's a lot of advantage in AI. Of course, there are those who see the, the disadvantage rather than the advantage, but I do believe that once you are able to use it correctly, 
um, it can definitely work to, to your advantage. Today, I see they're using it in the movie industry. Of course, mm -hmm. uh, those who are writers and script writers, they found a justifiable reason to protest the, the movie industry because their jobs are being replaced. No, right. see, so, mm. you know, okay, so here's the thing, right? And I think people forget that when they think of AI, right? They've been fed this information that, you know, it's going to take over jobs and, you know, yes, every stage of the process, jobs do get taken, but there's always, there's someone that is putting in the input into whatever you're programming. So there's someone giving it the data. If you're a copywriter or a writer, you are feeding the AI proper prompts. So there's prompt writers. So there's different ways to, to still maintain the job because it doesn't just function by itself. Well, not yet. Not, not yet. You still need humans to actually be able to put the accurate information into it. You, you're right. I, I think in a lot of cases, uh, a lot of things with AI has not been fully actualized. But in a number of cases, yes, I, I do believe that we can see a lot of the positive and some of the negative. And I do believe that one of the things that we were taught in the business school is technology. And how do you keep abreast of relevant technological development uh, so as to ensure that you're adopting it to the organization so as to have that technological competitive advantage? Because I do believe that having the technological advantage can significantly enhance um, the speed of productivity, enhance the accuracy in productivity, and also play a very significant role in cost reduction, which is more effective management uh, of the business. We have also seen in factories uh, where they have a complete automated system mm -hmm. uh, where there are limited use for human resources. Uh, in that case, we see justifiable reasons why the human factors may have the fear that they have in terms of being replaced by, by AI. But as a business person, I mean, you're seeing, hey, this is a significant reduction on cost of doing business. So, but we're not going to get into that today yeah. because I, I, I do believe that what you're saying is significant to be able to as a rising star in business is to know how to adopt this technology to your organization so it has to enhance efficiency accuracy uh, your ability to deliver and um, you know products with consistency because you're using ai and at the same time reduce the cost of doing business so i do see that ai has a very significant role in in business the negative effects of it we'll probably leave that for another conversation <laughs> but but thanks for your share um, let's talk a little bit about linked by design. What is linked by design? I know that you are also instrumental in branding, into marketing, uh, but help us to understand linked by design from your perspective. Okay, so everything always comes out of necessity, right? So mm -hmm. um, <laughs> again, you know, went into the whole systems and processes and I realized that that specific area um, of branding, marketing, um, being a storyteller, not many people know how to tell the right stories about their brand or themselves. And they leave it up to other people to tell stories about them. So, you know, a huge part of it is basically going in, finding out about the person and being able to shed light on their brand, creating their brand image, storyboards, you know, and, and representing them in the best light. You know, there are so many um, ways now, whether it be, you know, other, other platforms where people people go on and they don't shed accurate information or that or right light on a business. And we like to help with branding, keeping it consistent, making the colors. And of course, because I started out in design, it's a natural flow for me to go from where I was to flow right into the whole design and marketing portion of it, right? Where I can also show them, hey, listen, we can do this content strategy, this branding package for you, but we can also integrate the AI into it. Right. So it's automated. Interesting. I must also say I am totally appreciative of why or how you would end up in branding and marketing, because I'm starting with fashion design, moving over to interior design, then moving over to AI and systems. You have now integrated this body of knowledge into design. And that's what we could now call linked 
by design. Cassie, what I also see, we're going to come back to uh, branded and marketing shortly, but what I also see is that you have experience. Uh, you went to design in school. You also certify in the field of real estate investment. My God, um, you have so much, you know. Uh, talk to me a little bit about real estate. I mean, um, what inspired you to get into this field? Or did you get into it because you want to bring your interior design and skills to that platform? Talk to us about that. So, Actually, the real estate actually came from my dad, right? He was a strong mm -hmm. believer in in having a trade. You know, he was like a strong proponent. You know, school is great, but if you have a trade, it's better. So, you know, at the time, I was like, well, you know, real estate is a great trade to go into. And that's how I ended in real estate. You know, it mm -hmm. was not out of the... It was not because of the designing. It literally was just like, you know, it's a great trade to have. You know, it's a way to earn an income and work for myself. Um, after designing for many years on the other brands, so the, the first initial part of my story, right? I never even got into it was, was basically just designing on the other labels. So major labels. So I designed for Cachet, Art and B back in the day, you know, those labels were pretty big, wet seal. And I worked for a private label company. So my name was never on any of the labels or anything like that. Anyway, I had a friend that introduced me to the book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. And he said, you know, you're designing underneath this label for these companies, but nobody knows it's you. Nobody knows your name. And you're making at the time, it was like $9 an hour. And I went into a store, saw one of my designs, one belt being sold. And it was on sale for like $1,500 on sale. A belt, right? So needless to say, I was like, well, I need to, to get into this whole entrepreneurship journey. And that is literally the whole, I'll work for myself right or start this entrepreneurial journey and literally that's why real estate obviously you know gives you the ability to to work on your own you know what i mean Great. all right um i must say i love your story you know <laughs> I love your story. Listen, listen there's so many gamuts to it and i know you know sometimes you're telling the story and you're not starting from like start to to hear it's kind of like interwoven uh, i want to talk to you a little bit about um, and habits and um, you are multi-talented and you still have youth in your favor um you still have a lot of success behind your name um what i really want us to look at now is you know some of the, the habits you know that is essential for success i mean what habits do you think is necessary to influence them success so you have success today what are those habits that you think were your springboard to influence your success oh resilience resilience i don't think there is any other habit that you can have that you can implement other than resilience you have to be resilient in terms of of just <clears throat> getting up every day regardless of what putting the next foot in front of each other and that means you have to wake you know you, you hear a lot of people talking about waking up early how it's important to start the day how it's important to follow through you have to do that that's that's imperative you cannot get from point a to point z without doing that regardless of what regardless of how you're feeling regardless of insecurities regardless of whatever whatever is going on internally you can't get from point a to point z of wherever you're going without resilience i love that love that one of the things that we see happens a lot and um, many young people today they struggle to determine and um, what success is how would you define success wow that question is a loaded question before i thought success was a certain like monetary monetary um accomplishment accomplishment right that's what i thought defined success to me right now i can say success is the ability to be happy at where you are right now and that is success because you have to be happy with where you are at the current moment to even move on to the next moment. And I think in being happy, or being grateful, showing gratitude for everything that you have, where you are at the moment, 
will open the door for greater and bigger things in your life. And it starts with gratitude, right? So successful person, success is just being grateful for where you are in the moment and your doors will open for you. Wow. You see me clapping and you see me laughing, you know. Um, you sang as you've been reading from my hymn book, you know, um, the importance of gratitude. Mm -hmm. One of the things that we talk about is, you know, you need to have gratitude in life. And once you have gratitude, you have a reason to be happy. And you can now leverage happiness as your springboard to embrace success, to attract success. Mm -hmm. So I love that. I love what you said. Would you say that you have uh, a blueprint for, for success? In, in your field. I know that it begins with happiness, but I do believe that there's so many milestones that we all can define as, as happiness. Do you have a blueprint? Is it Does it begin with meditation in the morning? Does it begin with, you know, building your resilience? And do you have, you know, mentors and coach? You know, do you have your, you know, your secret sauce? <laughs> <for success? laughs> Listen, I, 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 I have adopted in the last, I'm going to say in the last three years, a lot of new um, techniques in order to get me from, from one stage to the next, right? And a lot of it comes down to, to just grounding myself and focusing on where I am now and then where I want to be. So, so I take stock as to where I am, make a list of all the things that it is that I want to accomplish and then set or, or, or goal setting them, right? So it wouldn't be goal setting like long-term goal setting. Yes, I have long-term long -term goals, right? But take stock of where I am and who can help me to get from point A to point B, which would be mentorship, right? And I look for those people that can assist me to get from that point to the next point, right? Uh, because I always believe that you need mentorship. And it could be somebody that I'm not even in touch with, someone I don't even know. But maybe they may have a tip online, on their YouTube, on their platform that can inspire me to take the next action. And what can help me to check off the box? I, I'm an avid, 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 avid reader, avid learner, right? So I'm like constantly learning. So if today I have 10 a list of 10 things that I have to get accomplished. If I don't know one of those things, I'm going to research it online to see how to get it done from someone that has done it and has the level of expertise that I would like to learn. And if they're in my sphere, then I'll reach out. Because before, I think maybe pride, maybe, 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 maybe it was pride, you know, or, or just a lack of knowledge why I didn't reach out to others to ask someone that knows more than me how to get there. But no. <laughs> I make it a constant habit to reach out. I know? like that. I, I do believe that regardless of how good you are, there are people that are better. And oh, um, having them having them on your side as mentors and coach, you know, sponsor, part, supportive community goes a very far away. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Like, you know, I mean, and, and a part of it, no, you know, I have the, the podcast as well. On that podcast, I, you know, reach out to these entrepreneurs like yourself you know and ask them the things that i wish i had known you know because again you know it 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 takes great minds to make a great mind right and you don't know what you don't know so in order for you as an entrepreneur to be successful you have to get the right skills and the right skills includes reaching out to people that know that have walked the path and have the skill sets that you don't have so that they can help you. And it's finding the right people too. Exactly. Now that we have learned a little bit about your secret sauce, you certainly have a lot of mentors and coach in your arsenal. If people that don't know that they're your mentor, you have it. <laughs> Love that. <laughs> uh, talk to us a little bit about challenges you had to overcome um, to be where you are today. What are some of those um, challenges? I heard you talk about Ooh. resilience and that tell me you have to be strong. You have to be tough-minded you have to press the brace the wall and say i'm going through this what challenges um, you have to overcome oh, oh 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 okay so i think you know when when my business closed and and again I, i'm going to speak to this right because a lot of people you know may think that when when you close a business and your heart is invested in it and you are passionate about it and passionate about you know not just growing it but it becomes your baby you know the the people around you 
you you you are hoping have your best interest in heart and i know for me i i really really thought that my business was something else than it was right again um so i had not just uh, i invested interest in it i put everything in it you know and years went by and when the business closed i realized you know what i spent so many hours working on this business so much time so much energy that when it closed i realized my kids were older you know and i had lost all that time with them they were taller they were bigger they were there was so much that happened when i wasn't around that it was a mental flogging right um the 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 partner that i went into business wasn't who i thought i had to go to therapy you know and i, I mean a lot happened mentally like i had to figure out a way to mentally deal with everything after it closed and it took a long time and it took support of family you know to try and pull me out of it support of my kids support of everybody and that learning process and i mean it's still difficult to speak about right but that process in itself is a hard it, it takes long to heal it takes a very long time to heal from from trauma and i don't think we speak about trauma a lot in our community right you know we get empowered to be this this independent entrepreneur and we speak about all the positive things and all the positive sides of it but nobody sheds light on every aspect of it and how it can disrupt you how it can disrupt your 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 family life how many things actually happen or take place and what it takes to be that person so what i what came out of that was me learning that in order for me to heal mm -hmm. i had to take one step and put another foot in front of the other and just literally keep moving through the pain of it um because again it was a it, it's like it's almost like people would say ptsd right um because it's a recurring feeling that you have to draw yourself out of and every day you have to make another step to to get better to healing yourself so <laughs> So, yeah. Wow. Now, you're tough, you're strong, and I love that you are a woman, but you're a fighter. You're not allowing the toughness in, in life to, to hold you back. And I think those are great signs of, you know, great leaders. So I know your young ones are definitely looking up at you and say, I love my mom. She's a great leader. She's a fighter. I think you have, if, if you don't want to do this for, for yourself, when you have kids, you have to do it and oh, for them. Absolutely. But talk to me a little bit. Um, when you look at the past, some of your challenges and some of the decisions you had to make, do you have regrets? And is those regrets holding you back or are they pushing you forward? So yes, 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 yes um but i think they are learning lessons right so mm -hmm. every every failure is a learning lesson right and sometimes you you sit there and you beat yourself up about in, in you know where i'm from they have a a, a thing shoulda coulda woulda right <laughs> so you know you you beat yourself up but i think if you continue to flog yourself you can't move forward and we are our biggest critics and I am probably my biggest critic right so of course you know you constantly flog yourself and you constantly but I think if I wallow in it I'll never move forward right and and that that goes for every entrepreneur that has ever gotten a flogging right if you sit in it right you'll never you'll never move forward you know I was listening to to Alex Hormozzi's one of his podcast episodes and he was talking about you know when he had something bad happen to him how fast he bounced back and i sat there and thought to myself i was like well had i bounced back as fast as i wish i had how much further would i have been i'm on a quest or a journey now to be able to enlighten other enlighten other entrepreneurs that they don't fall into the same traps so that they don't have those same issues so their recovery time is is faster why because being an entrepreneur is a much harder game than most people give it credit right they always talk about the nice and the easy parts of being an entrepreneur but every level of entrepreneurship means another level of difficulty and if you don't have that 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 backbone you're gonna fall to pieces you're right? gonna crumble oh you're gonna crumble you're gonna crumble and nobody speaks about that and i often talk about it i think it's because they're so far from they're so far removed 
from that pain that they they're not good at giving advice to the people that are closer to that pain right so they're they're talking, they're talking at a level that that they're not reaching those people and they may have their audience that they're speaking to that are closer to them but nobody's speaking to the audience that's down there in the the the, the trenches uh great points i think that yes several things happen they are far removed from the pain or sometimes they Others are so consuming the pain and some they get through the pain fast enough to learn from it and to recognize that no pain, no gain. Right. All right. No pain, no growth. Right. But you now have to make a commitment that pain is part of life and you're going to grow through that pain. Your attitude towards life. Right. I'm going to embrace it. Right. All right. And I'm going to grow through pain because let's think about it. You know, you go to gym and you want to put on some muscle and, you know, and so on. It's going to take some work and the work is going to cause you pain. But, you know, at the end of the day, you know, you're going to gain. You know, I think that you're right. I think a lot of perhaps education needs to be done in really helping people to divorce themselves from that falsified notion of what growth and development is all about. Because if you're seeing growth, but you're not seeing, you know, the challenges, the fight that you would have to go through from time to time to, you know, come out victorious. And, and you're just seeing the glory, no pain. It's a falsified notion of what success, you know, really is. Cassie, you have done so much for yourself. Today, you are an influencer in your industry. And I've listened to you, Justin, said that you, you know, you really want to use your experience to inspire and to empower others so as to possibly fast track their, their growth, you know, possibly allow them to avoid some of the pitfalls that you would have gone through during your growth. What other factors would you say influenced you or inspire you to become an influencer in your industry? Okay, so, <laughs> so funny story. I took on a client. I love the client. Most amazing personality ever. Like a mo most amazing person. Most clients, what they want is growth. What they want is success in their industry and what they want is clients, right? I helped her with the client acquisition and I said, you know, one of the strategies is that we need to put you out there as the face of your business, right? So you need to record daily. You need to put yourself out there so that I can grow your channel, right? So we can get people to you. It was the hardest thing for her to put herself out there. And I mean, it, it, it literally like, um, it was, I, I don't know. It was, it, it just was very hard for her to film the content and put herself out there because I, she didn't want to. Right. And I said, it's funny. I'm asking her to do something that I myself don't do. I, do, I don't do it. Right. And I'm like, you know what? Let me see. If I put myself out there and and like consistently put my the same thing I'm asking of her that I know will help her grow, let me try it myself, right? Because there are other growth strategies, obviously, you know. But mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right now, there's so much information out there, and I feel like if you're a positive person with really good information to share, you should be out there sharing. So I figured, you know what? I have a lot of knowledge. I've learned a lot, um, and I think that it would be imperative for me to put the information out there not just because not just because i'm asking other i'm asking other people to do it right but i myself need to do it but because i have all this information to share and that's how that whole started yeah love it love it um cassie what impact do you want to have on your audience how do you want to be remember so for my audience i would really really love for them to be able to hear all these people listen to all everybody that i bring on everybody that i interview i want to make sure that they're getting as much value as they can i want them to be able to see that they're not alone in their journey and they're not alone in their experiences because i think that if you knew that other people were going through the same thing it would be easier so I want them to be able to learn and grow. And I hope that it adds enough value to their life to, to make it better for them. Because my goal is to make it much easier for them to be the best version of themselves, have a successful and thriving business and, grow, you know, grow, help their families, leave a legacy for their families. And if I can help in that process, absolutely. Love it. Um, what are some of the future plans that you have for LinkedIn? 
by design? What are the future plans? Do you see yourself um, growing from a local brand into a national brand, into a regional brand? What is your big ticket vision for your brand? Oh, absolutely. I want to have a successful brand that is um, global. I want I want a global brand where, you know, I can get my information out to as many people as possible. I love that. All right, I have two more questions for you. The first of the two is um, how important is capital um, to your future plans? Capital is extremely important in our future growth. Like um, we definitely, definitely need capital to continue. And every business needs capital to, to continue their growth strategy. Okay. I can see your dog, you know, wants to join the conversation. My dog will be that from time to time. It's okay. <laughs> All right. Um, what I want to say is that um, we would be happy to come alongside you and give you the support and to access um, capital. We'll talk more about that and um, definitely help you make some of those connections and to really make your, your dreams and vision for the business and um, become um, real. So we'll talk about that. The last question I have for you now is what are essential money habits to have what are essential money habits i so, can share with you may if you want go ahead oh, no, no, no. <laughs> essential money money uh, money habits to have as an entrepreneur or personally share both of them with me your thoughts oh, oh. so thoughts as an entrepreneur um your, your goal is to essentially scale your business <clears throat> as best as you can scale it but you want to make sure you're implementing the the right right techniques in order to not spend as much as as like <clears throat> you have to limit spending in the business in order for the business to grow the right way right so you need to adapt the right tools have the right processes in place in order to limit your spend and personally that would be the same you know don't spend on things you don't need just don't spend on things that you don't need you know amazon amazon prime is great but you know it should not be an everyday thing and um i think you we we live in a very consumer focused world if you don't need it don't buy it i love it so for the audience um today we had cassie kiss and I know she's now getting warm up. We're going to be doing much more of these conversations to help you to build a better relationship with Cassie. Cassie, I really want to take you. thank you for taking the time out and sit with us today on Habits and Money. Um, it was a pleasure um, learning um, from you, your systems, and to, you know, to really be inspired also by some of your big um, ticket vision. I love the fact that you want to take your brand um, global because you really want to help people and um, to learn from your realities in doing business, to, to learn from your experiences and possibly leverage those experiences into their life where they can accelerate um, their growth. So there you have it. Any last words you want to share before we close today? Oh, I just want to say, you know, thank you so much for having me on today. You know, thank you for That's sharing with your lovely audience. And I hope that, you know, they're inspired to, you know, listen to you more because you have great guests that come on to your podcast. And, you know, if they if they so choose, they can listen and, and come join me over in Entrepreneurial Truth. They can check out my website, uh, linked by design.com www.linkedbydesign.com um you know go on socials check out any of my guests that i may have on the podcast too because i figure all us entrepreneurs can learn from each other and yeah yeah great great all right um great um having you cassie and for the audience um i want to just repeat we have today we are reaching over 50 countries with this podcast and um, over the last um, three months plus, we had over 40,000 persons who have subscribed to the platform. But we're seeing that we have over 70% of those who are looking at the program you have not yet subscribed. So I want to encourage you to press that subscription button. It's free. And you will be the first to get these content that we bring into you on a regular basis. And of course, you'll get a chance to see more of uh, beautiful Cassie with that wonderful smile that she had. Thank you so much. Cassie, it has been a great day with you. 